Ahoy, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Screaming Pirate EDC. So this is the first video post Blade Show, and uh, I kind of spent more than I meant to, but that's kind of Blade Show whenever you uh, create content. I hate to say it. The thumbnail, not clickbait, guys. Title, not clickbait. I literally brought home over five thousand dollars in knives, and I'm excited to show them to you guys. Now, I will go ahead and say I did not spend that much. Some of them were given to me for review and I have to send them on, but I am so excited about these knives and I want to show them to you and want to talk you through my time at Blade Show. And we are top down. So I'm going to kind of go through day by day on how the show went for me personally, just so you guys can know what it's like going to Blade Show. So showed up Thursday uh, around two or three got my uh, pass to get in for the early bird and then helped a friend set up their booth around 4.30. Uh, well, walking through the show, I passed by JRW, said hi, uh, they do great stuff over there. And I asked if they had any of the large curators like the displays, they did. So later on, I made a note to go pick one up. So what I picked up from JRW since they were technically my first stop, guys, I'm going to put that in big air quotes, was the OD Green Display Curator. Very cool. You can put coins, watches, knives, everything on here. And because it has that rubber bottom, it doesn't move around. Very cool. So, all that happened. Had a dinner Friday night with a bunch of makers and reviewers and designers. Fantastic time. 3 a.m. Yes, that's right. 3 a.m., on Friday, got in line to pick up quite a few pieces that I really wanted to get my hands on. Doors open, main room, went in, sent my wife over to Koenig, and I went straight for CKF to pick up the LaSpec collab. Now, this is probably the best CKF I have ever held. It is phenomenal. All the ergonomics are great. I even held a few custom LaSpecs at the show this is on par this this stacks up which is insane to say now as far as pricing goes here guys i will have the prices pop up on the screen for you um if i know some of these prices are going to be way outlandish for some people but prices are what you're willing to pay for the knives and that's how these shows work if you're not willing to pay it then you don't buy the knife um so these are going to be the prices going to have them up but this is gorgeous, in love with the CKF. Now, once I bought that, I headed over to Koenig, where my wife was in line, and I had to have it. I'm in love. It is the Rose Gold Koenig Arius. Now, I thought it was Rose Gold, Rose Gold, because I didn't understand. They had to explain it to me a few times because I'm apparently I'm dense. Um, this Rose Gold is actually a DLC Rose Gold. I didn't know DLC could be anything other than black, apparently. It can be Rose Gold as well. So it will never fade. Very, very cool. And this thing sounds incredible. Yeah, incredible. Really, really like this configuration. After that, I went over to ProTech after walking around for a bit because I was going to pick up this beauty. This is the TR5 in rose gold. Hey, it now matches my Koenig. Very, very cool. My one complaint here is I wish this firing mechanism was either rose gold or DLC, but that's a nitpick. But it fires and it's gorgeous. I love it. While I was over there, this was around 11-ish at that point, my wife pointed out to me that Bob Terzola was actually at the ProTech booth. Went over, talked to him for a bit, and he was signing knives. Now, when he said, when they said signing knives, I thought it was like a Sharpie, right? No. He pulls out a Dremel. I mean, a literal Dremel, guys, is sitting off to the side. He picks it up and has a circular head on it, like one of the actual, like, circle ones that are, that's flat on top. And I was like, what the fuck is he doing with that? He somehow managed to get, and this is going to be really hard to show you guys. Oh, let me see if I can get it focused. There you go just on the surface signed his name guys that's pretty fucking cool um i'm a fan whether you are or not is up to you i like it a whole hell of a lot so after that that was kind of my end of day one uh relaxed 
you know, got some food and just chilled. It was a long day. I even took a nap that afternoon, guys. I was it pooped. Um, also that day, I forgot to mention it was the same day, we actually met up and had lunch with my buddy over at Tier 1 Gear Reviews. So really nice to see him. Congratulations to him on his Amazon knife drop on that uh, cool Raptor Claw knife, guys. It did fantastic. Go check it out. I actually have a couple of videos on that knife. So, day two, I did a ton of filming. If you've been watching the shorts or you've been watching the reels on Instagram, there are a lot. We did a lot of that on day two. I also entered all my lotteries and did a few more pickups. So, to continue with that, I also picked up the Death Cookies from 52 Grace. Now, this one has the hidden image under the glow in the dark, very cool. And this is the collaboration with Breakfast Club EDC. I really love the integrated egg. Very funny. Love it. So on day two is when I entered in all my lotteries on Saturday. So the one that I won, the one lottery I won and I'm ecstatic about is one of the first, I guess, like offerings at a show in a folder from Ben, uh, from Boatwright Bladeworks, guys. So Chase also did my folder, but this is fantastic. This is the Lavaca. Look at that copper backspacer. Yeah, guys. I mean, he's only been doing folders for a few months. I love. I love, I love, I love. Uh, after doing some filming, I was over at Left Concepts. Talked to them for a bit. They said, you need to check out the table directly next to us. And I was like, okay, sure. I trust you guys. I know both of you. It was Chapman Lake Knives. So this company is about eight months old and they're still working out some of the kinks and the knives. They're still trying to figure out, you know, everything that they're doing on there. They're already, I think, two quote designs in. You can get this with or without studs, but the whole thing is US made and US assembled, except for the bearings. They do a roller bearing, but this thing is incredibly smooth. Now, the design may not be everyone's taste, but it is fairly ergonomic. You know, I am back a little far from the blade. I don't love that. There are a few tweaks that I would make, but being able to support an American company and show off something to you guys that I know a lot of people haven't seen. Very, very cool. Really excited about this. So all of that happened, did a bunch of filming on Saturday, talked to a bunch of people and, and then Sunday rolls around. So Saturday night had dinner with a few friends we're in the pit, talked to a bunch of people, and Sunday rolls around, did a last minute uh, videos, and picked up, did not expect, three more knives. Technically, three more knives, guys. So, the first one that I bought that I was like, everyone was like, you just need to buy this. You just need to go get one, just buy it. Everyone and their mother, I'm talking Zach at River's Edge, everyone, said, go get an updated Arno Bernard I Mamba. And I was like, okay, well, I've had an eye mamba. What do I care? Go over to the booth. I'm talking to him there. And I was like, okay, you have to tell me what you updated. I know I gave feedback. I know Lefty gave feedback. What did you update? So the D10 has been updated. And instead of loose bearings, they are now caged, which I really like to see. Also, I got this marbled, I believe, carbon fiber. Absolutely gorgeous. Very nice detent now. Really, really like it. Also, they are offering a flipperless. I don't know if they're doing it on the inlays, but I know they're doing it in the tie, which is what Jake over at Bearded Gear picked up and left concepts. Very cool. Love this configuration. Very happy with the updates. So after that, I was over at HOM. They do ballast songs, guys. I am not a ballet boy at all, but I do have friends over at HOM. They are great people. Check them out. I was talked into buying a trainer. This was like $80. They said, you need to get it. You need to learn how to be a ballet boy, at least a little bit to fit into the show. And I have more to talk about with more people. Why the hell not guys? So then finally, my last pickup as it were, was from Greg over at Sparrow Knife Co. You guys know I am a massive Sparrow Knife Co. fan. Love Greg, love everything that he does. Love the customs, love the productions. This is one of his newer ones. I believe this is a prototype still because he's going to make some changes. I know that he's going to adjust this lock bar and have more of an opening there so you can get to it. This is the Baku. This is his collaboration with Cancept. So very interesting. Got this from Greg. Really just, I love everything that he puts out. And uh, Greg has become a friend of the channel and it is very cool to see everything that he is doing. So 
all that is out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick set change so I can show you all the rest of the knives that I picked up. And when I say picked up, were either given to me or gifted to me to do reviews with. Uh, most of these I will not be keeping. They are to pass along or to send back to makers, but I wanted you guys to see what are upcoming reviews and the rest of the things that I picked up at the show. But everything on the table is what I purchased. Let me know what your favorite piece is here and let's go ahead and do that set change. And we're back after the set change, guys. So everything here on the table is what I have in to review. So you will be seeing these either in reels, shorts, long form videos, something or the other, but I wanted you guys to see everything on the table. So I picked these up throughout the show. Most of these I picked up on Saturday. So first up, the Blau Rock BRB V4. So this is the version four. One of the main changes here is you see these standoffs. It's so when they're doing the heat treat, this bar doesn't fall down. Very cool. The reverse flick is fantastic. And the action, incredible. Really do like what Blau Rock is doing. Very, very cool company. Great people to talk to. After that, you guys know, great budget company. They've already made their name in the last year, Rosecraft. So this is the Pitbull. Ooh, there we go. It, guys, it's a pretty damn cool knife. Makes some great sounds and even for a large glove, fits really well. Very, very cool. Uh, after that, I went by Big Knives. I've been told, I don't know how many times by my buddy, uh, Epic Snuggle Bunny, I need to go check them out. Well, apparently, Mark Begg watches the channel, likes my stuff, wanted to have me uh, have some stuff for me to review. Very cool. So I went ahead and talked to Mark Begg and I picked some things up so I can review them. Uh, very interesting. So first up is the Astio. This looks very much like the old customs that uh, Begg used to do. This inset uh, frame is interesting. And honestly, the action, pretty damn good. After that is the mini glimpse. And guys, I think these are like on sale for like 80 bucks right now. Fucking good for 80 bucks. I, yeah, I'm a fan. And then finally is the, oh gosh, guys, I'm going to forget. Diamici, I believe. These are not yet released. He had them at Blade. Yeah, very clean, very clean Blade. I really do like that. So after picking all those up, sorry for bumping everything, guys. I then went over to Arcform. It was really good to see Arcform back and doing more knives. They haven't really released anything new in a couple of years. Really wanted to see some new stuff. This is the theory. Now, the designer of this knife was actually at the Arcform table. It's great talking to him. And yeah, guys, the theory. Very interesting. Really like the lines on this one. Really do. And then finally, Saturday night in the pit, I'm hanging out with my buddy, uh, Chase Boatwright, and a few others, Black Flag Survival, uh, I think uh, Lynch uh, Blade was there, or Lynch Northwest, and KPL. So everybody was in the pit, hanging out. And Gumbiner Knives, who I already did a short and a reel on, guys, was also there in the pit. We were talking for a bit. Just so you know, he, he brought a kitchen folder. I showed it off. It won Best Kitchen. It was his very first blade. The kid is talented. and He's like 24, guys. It, he's insane. He's absolutely insane. Well, we're talking, he had a knife that didn't sell on Saturday, so he wanted me to go ahead and uh, put it on loan to me, as it were, guys, so that I can do some content, take some photos, etc. And this is the Omni. Guys, I am blown away by his just, his craftsmanship at the age he's at. It's incredible. Uh, yeah. So, this is a Mokume pivot collar. And then that is also Mokume there on the pivot, okay? And this handle is bourbon barrel. That's cool as hell, guys. A bourbon barrel handle? Yeah, I like that. It is small. It is about a three and a half finger grip for me. But this is a full custom, guys. Like a full custom piece that he made himself. Nothing else, okay? Very cool. Really like seeing the quote, new generation of knife makers, you know, really making a splash. Very interesting. Really do like this one so far. Let me know what here on the table you guys are most excited about for reviews and uh, which one you want me to do first. 
it's probably going to be the combiner or the blau rock just so you guys know but really excited to have all this in for review hopefully you guys are having a good day and uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video on how blade show went and i can see you next year